Yes, they're dressed. All right. And he would grab it. He was very dramatic. He grabbed a sheet. You know, like you pull a sheet off of a table and all the silverware stays there. he just pull it off. And then he would grab the woman by the hand. And he would yank her out of that, off that stretcher. And when she landed, she better be healed. And they were. And it was amazing. But he would grab them when they come in. He would grab, like if they're paralyzed, he would grab their leg. And he'd say, leg, you work in Jesus' name. Leg, you work. And he would grab it and move their legs around. And just move the leg. And you work in Jesus' name. You work. Now, here, be healed. Get up. And just yank them off the stretcher. And they'd get up, glory to God, and run all around. And I'm watching that. I'm thinking, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. And I'd watch this and fall asleep. It'd run to the end, run back. I'd start it all over again, wake up, do it all over again. I watched it over and over. I have over 300 Allen tapes. So I'm watching these things. <clears throat> now, 1970, Allen dies in a hotel in San Francisco. They're trying, they got all these revivals set up. So they're trying to figure out what to do. So they say, Bob, you've been with Allen. You preach. Bob said, I'm not A.A. Allen. They go, okay, we know, but we got these things set up, so just preach until we figure out what we're going to do. So Bob says, well, okay. And he said, I don't know what to do. They said, well, you've been with him. Just preach his sermons. So Bob said, okay. So Bob goes out there and starts preaching. Same miracles. Exactly like Alan. Everybody says, well, the anointing got passed down. No, 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 no. He was around it. He saw it. He got faith for it. He started stepping out in it. <clears throat> Bob did the same thing. Now, after a while, Bob's name was actually Robert, of course. And he did exactly what his mentor did. And he changed his name and started using his initials, like A. Allen used his initials. A. C. Alonzo Allen. Well, Bob, Robert, started using his initials. You might have heard of him. His name is R. W. Shambach. That's Bob. He traveled with Alan. He saw it. It wasn't that God passed his anointing to him. He got around Alan. He saw how it worked. He got faith for it. Why? Why, why didn't he get Alan's anointing? Don't need it. Had his own. Right? He had, the, he had his own. You don't need another man's anointing. See, when you say you want another man's anointing other than Jesus, you, you get over into idolatry. You start wanting to be like that man instead of wanting to be like Jesus. The Bible says the Lord is my portion. You know, I, don't need a, I might need a double portion of Elijah, but I only need one portion if the Lord is my portion. Amen? Now, <clears throat> I'm watching these videos. Watching David Hogan. We had all of his sayings down. He had, he had this little dance he did. He'd dance one side, he danced a little Indian dance he did, a little Mexican Indian dance. And he had this handkerchief, and he would whip that handkerchief and yell, Fuego, which means fire. And he'd yell, and things would happen. And he had little statements like, Well, I know you'd have done it better, but you wasn't there. And so we had all these statements down. And my family was watching it. And so we went out to visit my grandmother. And then we came back in. And I met a preacher out there where my grandmother was at. And he said, well, we'll have to get you out here to preach for us sometime. I'm like, okay, when? Because I had nothing lined up. When? Just tell me when. I'll be there, right? <clears throat> so he wrote everything down. He said, well, I'll call you. And I said, okay. So we go back home. One week, two weeks. I don't hear anything. Out of sight, out of mind. He ain't going to call. I go to the hospital, I keep praying for people one day while I'm gone. He calls. He says, can your husband come out and minister for us? She said, yeah, when? Sunday, okay. <clears throat> well, I had kids and, you know, my children, and, I, and I'm trying to help people get in the ministry and, you know, barely in the ministry myself, and I'm trying to help them in. So I tell the kids, when we get out there, each of you take five minutes and say something, you know, take a scripture and talk about it for five minutes. Not more than five minutes, but five minutes. So I had a line of kids. And it was like 35 minutes worth of kids. You know, just five minutes apiece. My daughter sang, and so they were going to sing. So we go to this little Pentecostal Church of God. And it's one of those churches that... The church starts at 6, and by about 7.15, everybody's home. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, get it over with and go. And so we go out there, and they do their worship, they do their offering, and then they hand the microphone to me. And so I say, okay, you got five minutes apiece, so here you go. Boop, boop, boop. Go ahead and get the five minutes. They started going through the five minutes. They get each one of them out, right? Now, when, once they do that, they hand the microphone back to me. Well, we've already been there like two hours by that time. So I get up. Now, I've been listening to David Hogan all the week, and then all the way out there. I had him on cassette tape, too. And so by the time I get there, I'm mean. I mean, I'm doing just like him and talking just like him. And I get up there and I said, all right, 
Who in here is not born again? Let me see your hand. And they look like, oh, thank God. He's going right to the altar call. We're going to be out of here in five minutes. And I'm like, but I wasn't going to the altar call. And so I said, who, come on, you know if you're born again, you know if you're not. Let me see your hand if you're not born again. Two hands went up or two guys went similar. I said, all right, now, here's the deal. I'm going to preach the gospel. We're going to prove Jesus lives. <clears throat> if we prove that, you serve him. If Jesus doesn't show up, you go out that door, you forget Christianity, you live any way you want because a God that won't show up when your salvation's on the line isn't worth serving anyway. I said, is that a deal? And these guys like looking at each other like, Jesus ain't never, been, ain't never showed up in any church I've been in so far. I think the odds are in our favor. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, okay, yeah. And I said, all right, now, I'm not talking to you for the rest of the night. I'm talking to these people that say they're Christians. I said, who in here has not laid hands on anybody in the last week? Or I said, who in here has laid hands on anybody in the last week? No hands went up. Who, who laid hands on somebody in the last month? No hands went up. Who in here has laid hands on the sick in the last year? No hands went up. I said, you're all in sin. If you died tonight, you'd all go to hell. And the pastor was sitting over here, and you ought to see him. They're looking at him like, you going to let him talk to us that way? And he's just sitting over there like, oh, God, what have I done? You could just see it on his face. I said, all right. I said, let me tell you something. I said, I have to set my own faith to raise myself from the dead. Because if I stepped out there and got hit by a bus... You'd all gather around me and look at me and go, well, I guess it was his time to go. I said, not one of you try to raise me up. So I set my own faith to raise myself from the dead. And they're looking at me like, can you do that? I don't think you can do that. I don't think that's legal. I think somebody else actually has to raise you from the dead. I don't think you can do it yourself. And I, I said, well, look, Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. I pick it back up. Jesus said, I can do the same works he did. If he did it, I can do it. And they're looking like they're not sure. Well, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure. But I knew they weren't sure, so I knew I was okay. Right? I figured I was okay. So we go on. And I said, now, I preached for like an hour, two hours. Actually, it's closer to two hours. And I don't know if they liked the message or if they were just afraid to get up. You know? Because nobody left. Everybody's scared. I mean, I think I had them scared. And so I said, all right, we preach the gospel. Now, who in here is sick and needs healing? Hands went up. I said, get down here right now. You get down here, we're going to lay hands on you, and you're going to get healed. If you leave sick right now without getting prayed for, it's your fault. So we had people come down across the front. I think it was 32 people come across the front. They're all coming down. They're lined up. I'm there. Now, all of a sudden, I'm realizing I have never done this before. I've never, done, this was all brand new to me. And I, you know, so I look at this guy. Now I'm left handed. So I automatically kind of go to the left first. That's just natural. So I look over and this guy's got this brown suit. He's the only guy in a suit. And he's standing there just like this. And so I walk over to him. He, you know, just, he just had deacon all over him. You know what I'm saying? He just looked like a deacon. So I walk up to him and I said, Yes, sir, what can I do for you? And he's standing there and he said, my, shoulder, my arm's paralyzed. I got pain in my shoulder and I haven't moved my arm in four years. I had never dealt with a paralyzed arm. I didn't know what to do. Inside, I'm wanting to go, hmm, and what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> right? Because I, I just wanted to walk off and leave him, okay? Because I never dealt with a paralyzed arm. I didn't know what to do. But I knew if I left, I might as well go home. Right? If I knew if I walked off without trying something, I knew it was over. It was done. So I went over. I looked at him. And all of a sudden, I remembered those A. Allen videos I've been watching. And I remembered Allen and how wild he was. You know? And I thought, all right. I grabbed his arm. Said, in the name of Jesus, arm, you work. And I pulled on that arm. And that thing went, I'm not kidding. You could hear it. It went, because it had not moved in four years. All the bursa was gone out of the joints. And it was like... And so I put... You work in Jesus' name. I pull that arm out. There it is. <laughs> it ain't moving. And I, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, well, he was actually better off like this. <laughs> you know? Because at least like this, he could drive home. <laughs> right? Now, if his arm's like that, he can't drive home, man. And I'm thinking, what, what do I see? So I'm thinking, put it back. I push that thing right back. 
And I'm thinking, I can't just leave it like that. We got to do something. I remember Alan, he worked it, you know? So I like, okay, pull again. So I pull, and it's same thing. It was like sawing wood, you know? And I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you work in Jesus' name, you work. And I'm thinking, how do I get out of this? <laughs> Have you ever noticed the Holy Spirit will give you an idea and then he will disappear? And you're like, okay. You know? I mean, because I'm the one they're going to get mad at because they can't grab him. You know? And I'm pulling the arm back and forth. And, all, and this guy, and I'm watching him because if I see pain, I'm going to stop. But I'm watching him and he's just watching me. You know? So I'm thinking, I got to move on here. And I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn loose of your arm. You keep it going. I'm trying to put it back on him, right? You keep it going. He goes, okay. I said, in the name of Jesus' arm, you work. And I shoved that arm and he goes, glory to God. Glory to God. And he started yell, I'm healed. I'm healed. Glory to God. And I look at and I'm, sitting, I'm like, really? I mean, I am as shocked as he is. Hey, I'll be honest with you. I don't know whose faith was operating, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't mine. All right? And so now it's like when it hit, it's like, yeah, bless God, we can do this. So I stepped over the next guy and said, what can I do for you? And we went right down the line. All 32 people got healed. I mean, I, I was amazed. Amen? And, I, and I, was, I, I was feeling pretty good, right? Got these people healed. And I'm like, all right. Now, who wants to be able to do what I just did? Hands went up. I said, it's called the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Come get it. That was my understanding. Come on, get it. Eleven people came down and lined up. So I walked down there and I thought, all right, here we go. Now, I'm like, wait a minute. I've never led anybody through to the baptism in the ghost, in the Holy Ghost. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm just kind of following the order. I just don't know what to do. I've never done it. And then I remembered in the Bible it says that the apostles laid hands on the people and said, receive the Holy Ghost. And they did. So I thought, okay, let's do it that way. So I... Name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Bam, they took off in tongues. All right. And with the next person, receive the Holy Right down the line. Ten of them. But there were eleven. The eleventh was a little woman. There were other women, but the last one was a little, little woman. I walked over to her. I said, receive the Holy Ghost. Took my hand off, started to walk off. Nothing happened. I stopped and looked at her. And see, I didn't have near the, the tact that I do today. Right? I wasn't near refined. Okay? And I looked at her and I said, what's the matter with you? And she looked at me and didn't even answer, just started crying. I don't, I don't know, I just, every time I try to get out of town, I try to leave the town, I get my car, I get to the city limits, and I can't go past the city limits, and I have to turn and come back. And I said, oh, you got a devil. Okay, but that's really not the best way to tell somebody, right? Because you ought to seen her. She's like, I do, a devil? Where is it? She's like, get it off of me, get it. And I, you know? And I'm, for a split second, see, I like a good joke, right? For a split second, I was thinking, boy, I could have some fun. Yeah. If I told her, it's on your back, she'd be, I mean, you know, if, if I was to tell her, it's on your feet, I mean, I could, I could have had her doing anything. And I wanted to, all right? But thank, thank God, <laughs> common sense prevailed, okay? I looked at her and I said, now look, tomorrow you're going to get in your car. And you're going to come down here and the pastor's going to get in his car. And you're going to go to the city limits. And if you don't go on through those city limits, the pastor is going to push your car with his car. And you're going to go on through the city limits. Do you understand? And she's like, uh, okay. And I look over at the pastor and he's sitting over there going... I mean, he didn't want anything to do with it. Now, earlier in that, I had quit looking at him because every time I looked over at him, he would look at me and go, <laughs> which is his way of saying, stop preaching, shut it down. So I just quit looking at him and kept preaching, right? And so when I told her that, she said, okay. And when she said, okay, bam, she took off in tongues. Now, I... I'm not trying to set a doctrine, you understand? I'm just telling you what happened. That was unusual. So now we, we preached the gospel, we healed the sick, we showed the baptism of the Spirit, and then I went back and said, all right, now, we have preached the gospel, healed the sick, I've shown you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I think we've proven that Jesus is alive. Who wants to serve this Jesus that we've proven? 
and I'm looking at these two guys. And they're like, yeah, Jesus is here tonight. Ain't no doubt about that, right? So they, they get up, and they come walking down the aisle, and then two other guys, or actually, yeah, two other guys, got on this side, and they started walking down the aisle. And I thought, wait a minute, there was only two. Where'd you come from? You know, did, it, what is, did I convince you in my preaching you weren't saved, or were you just hiding from me in the beginning? And so they came down front, and I prayed for them and led them through a prayer. I said, all right, now turn around here. I said, I want to introduce to you four new creations. They just got born again. They're in the kingdom of God. Now, who is going to pray for this young man? And over here, this little woman goes, I said, all right, you go get her phone number, give her yours, and anytime you feel like going back and doing what you used to do, before you do, you call her. And so I connected them. I connected all four. And the last time we were out there, which was actually just a couple years ago, all four of those young men were still in church, serving God, because we didn't just go, God bless you, I hope you make it. You know, and let them walk back out the door. We connected them with the people there. Amen? Now, now that was the first... Now, you understand, that night, everything I did, I had never done before. And everything I did, I was acting. And I was just acting like David Hogan. I was acting like A.E. Allen. I was acting like Jack Coat. You understand? I was just acting. But I've never had to act since. Because the first time you do anything, you're acting. Your first day at your job, you were acting like an employee because you sure weren't profitable to the company. Amen? You had to be told what to do and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. But I've never had to act since. Why? Because I know the gospel works. Amen? You can't convince me different. You can't. You come tell me the healing's passed away. You're too late. Amen? Now, I know it's been long. I know I've been going for a long time. The healing part doesn't take long. All right? we're not, this isn't a prayer meeting where we're going to stay here all night and pray and pray and pray and pray. This, that ain't it. We're going to speak to your body. We're going to speak to the illness. We're going to speak to the problem. We're going to tell it to go. We're going to lay hands on you. Life is going to go into you. And then you're going to be able to do what you couldn't do before. And that's what we're going to tell you to do is do what you couldn't do before. And then you're going to do it and be free. Amen? And, and the good, good thing is this ain't going to be some long line where I'm doing it. I told you this ain't the Curry Show. Right? This is training. This is the Jesus show. We trained you. If I trained you and then I did all the praying, I would undo everything I've done for the last three days. Because I would make you think that I'm the only one that can do it. But the fact is, you've been trained, you've been taught, you know what I know. The only difference between you and me now is experience. That's the only difference. And honestly, experience doesn't mean that much as long as you know that when you speak, that sickness or that devil has to obey you. Right? And if you know that, guess what? You're going to get some experiences too. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of you have been through the training? Let me see your hands. Okay? Hands down. How many of you need healing? Let me see your hands. Okay? Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. The, now, and then this is going to be organized somewhat. Okay? Many people think that God can't get organized. God is organized. Okay? When the sun rises at the right time, they can tell you exactly when it's going to be. Why? Because God is that predictable. He put, this, he put all this stuff in motion, and it works like clockwork. Actually, it works better than clockwork because we base our clocks on it. Okay? So we can get organized. When Jesus fed the multitude, he had them sit down in groups of 50s. Isn't that right? That means that there was organization. So you don't have to be disorderly. You can be organized and get the job done. The power of God is mechanical. It works. Amen? Now, here's what we're going to do. Those of you that have been through the training, I'm going to get you to get up, come up front, line right up here, and face that way. Right? Now, if we need to kind of line around the walls, we can do that too. Give you some quick instruction. This isn't going to be hard. Okay, it's not going to be hard. Now, those of you that need healing, here's what we're going to do. We are going to do it really one of two, well, kind of two ways. I'm not going to have you necessarily come to them. We're going to have them come out to you. Okay? Now, if you need to be, if you're in the middle and you need ministry, we're going to have you move to the aisle. Okay? Now, we're not looking for your faith. You're here. That's all that's required of you. Okay? 
we have faith for you. So, if you have faith, great. Don't get rid of it. We'll use it. But if you don't have faith, don't worry about it. We'll have it for you. Amen? Now, here's what's going to happen. Those of, those, those of you that are praying or ministering, you're going to go to these people. You're going to introduce yourself. You're going to give them your name. You're going to shake hands or whatever. You're going to be polite, right? Typical. Now, those of you that need healing, these people are going to ask you what the problem is. Now, even if there is somebody up here that's a doctor, tonight you're not. You understand? You're not a doctor. You're a divine healing technician. You're a believer. You're a Christian. You understand? So, we don't need your medical history. We're not doctors. All we need is the name or a symptom so that we know what we're going to beat. Right? And it gives us something to latch our faith on so we can pull it out. Okay? Now, if you don't know, and, you, and if you have several things, you just tell them, I got lots of things. I got several things from me. Alright? If that's true, then they're going to pray against a spirit of infirmity. Right? If it's terminal, let them know. Because if it's terminal, they're going to handle it a little bit different. Terminal is very similar. They're going to break the spirit of death. Then they're going to call the name of that thing and command it to go. It's not, not long and drawn out. But I, I, I'm just giving you some instruction. Now, <clears throat> they're going to minister to you and they're going to speak to you very forcefully. Right? But they're not talking to you. They're talking to the problem that's been bothering you. At some point, they're going to ask you if they can hold your hand. When they do, when you put your hands out, don't put your hands palm up. You put your hands palm down. Alright? Now, let me show you. Can I use you? The reason being is this. If they put their hands like that, right? Then, if you grab like this, alright? You, you see how we're standing here? And we'll turn this way. Just like that. If you do that, and the power of God hits them, or anything happens that they need to either fall down or anything like that, the first thing they're going to do is close their hands and I'm trapped. See? Trapped, right? And if he falls, guess what? I'm going with him. Can't help it, right? So you don't do that. So you tell them, turn, they have their hands like this. And then whenever you take their hands, you don't do this because that's the same thing, right? You do this, right? Sideways, slide it right in. Not in the palm, in the fingers. Right? If I do it in the palms, he could close his fingers and I'm still trapped. But if I'm here, if he starts to move his fingers, I feel it and I slide out. Right? And that way he falls and I keep standing. Right? Ask me how I figured this out. Okay? Some experiences. All right? Now, here's what you guys are going to do. You're going to find out what the problem is. You're going to tell it what you want it to do. You're going to tell it to go to leave, you're going to speak to their body to be healed. Okay? Now, here's the key. You have to speak to this thing in a manner that makes it obey you. That means, I'm not talking about loud. Listen, volume is not power. Alright? It's strength. Strength of spirit. You want to speak forcefully. Now, you don't want to do this. Alright? There's three ways to speak. You can speak out of your mouth, out of your throat and lungs, or out of your spirit. Okay? If you speak out of your mouth, you're just saying, Go! Go! You hear that? That's kind of, it's, that's the mouth. Or you say, Go! That's more lungs. But whenever you speak out of your spirit, it's then you tell it, In the name of Jesus, I command you, Go! You hear the difference? Yes. It's here. You hit with the force of the spirit through your words. Okay? And it will go. Now, here's what you're going to do. Can you just see your hands here? Okay? Just like that? Now, you tell them, put your hands out, all right, go to pray. And let's say you had um, a fibromyalgia, all right, that's a common one, all right? Then you'd say something along the lines of, in the name of Jesus, fibromyalgia, I command you in Jesus' name, go! You see how I said go and grabbed him at the same time? When I say go, at the, if I grab him at that instant, then it will cause the force of my words in the spirit to go through the hands and not out the mouth. All right? And then it goes in. Hold like two or three seconds. Go. Two, three, four. Let go. Right? Because if you stay too long, if they are resistant, it will go in and come right back out. 
But if you let go, it goes in, it stays. Whether they like it or not. Okay? Huh? Is that the only disease that happens? No, no, no. Any of them. You could name any of them. Same thing. Uh, there, there, yeah, there's different things. Uh, with fibromyalgia, usually you have two or three different things. You'll have insomnia, you'll have stomach problems. So actually with, with fibromyalgia, you probably hit spirit of infirmity as opposed to just fibromyalgia, right? Um, cancer, if, they, if somebody has cancer, you want to say spirit of cancer, I command you to go. I break the spirit of cancer, break the spirit of death. One more, I break the spirit of fear of cancer. Okay? Because you can kick out cancer and the spirit of cancer, or a spirit of death, spirit of cancer, and if you don't get the fear of cancer, or yeah, fear of cancer, then the, those two will go, and that fear of cancer will call them back later. All right? Again, just experience. So hit all three. Okay? Don't forget the fear part, because the fear part's a big thing. Okay? All right. Here, one last thing. If possible, males minister to males and females to females. Okay? Now, if you're a husband and wife couple or something, you can minister to either or both. All right? Just simple as that. But we just try to keep it that way because it's easier. All right? Remember, take them by the hand. You don't have to put your hands on them anywhere. All right? Just take them by the hand and do it. All right? All right. Now, how many of you in the middle there, you, how, many, how many there needs healing? Let me see your hand. Okay, so, so we might need to get them to move to the side a little bit and so everybody can get to them. If, if y'all want... Do y'all want to come forward? Would that be easier? Okay, all right, we'll just do it that way. It could be easier than moving through. It, it works both ways. So come on up. Let's get one... You want to you wanna direct traffic for just a second? You want to direct traffic for just a minute? Yeah, just direct them to somebody. Okay, y'all spread out a little bit. Get some room. Now listen. Listen carefully. Those of you that are praying... This is not a prayer meeting, it's not, not socializing, it's not fellowship. Find the problem, command the problem, minister to them, turn loose, let them go sit down, and if somebody else needs prayer, minister to them. Don't draw this out, okay? Don't just start praying and enjoy praying and keep on going, all right? Do your job, hit the thing, make it go, all right? Now, yeah, <clears throat> women, uh, women to women, male, uh, male to male, female to female. All right. Now we we appreciate you know your patience here. I know it takes a little bit of time, but there were some things. All the things I told you tonight, I wasn't just trying to be funny or any of that kind of stuff. Each thing had a point and a principle behind it. That's why I wanted to share with you. All right. Next, let's let's move some more on. Let's move some more on. Let's move some more on. There we go. Come on up. Find somebody. Find somebody. Find somebody. Okay. Wait a minute. One, one person at a time. One person at a time. Tell him to take his hands off. Yeah. Well, one person at a time. You can put your hand on her back, but not on her back. Okay? Spread them out. Spread them out. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Good, good. That's it. That's it. Good. Yes, ma'am. It'd be better if they were, but it's... It, if... If... Yeah. If you didn't, if you weren't at all the sessions, then get with somebody else that's praying with them and let them pray and you agree with them. All right? Just let's do it that way if you can. Let's go. Spread them out. Bring more out. Let's go. Let's go. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring more people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Bring them out. Uh, get him to come out. There we go. Look. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I'll be right there. I'm ready. Get some more. Come on, come on bring them out. Um, Larry, Larry, go ahead and bring some more down. Just, yeah, let's just get them on out. There you go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. She's right there. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. That's it. Let's go. Now, if, if some of y'all want to move in to some of the ones that still need ministry, go ahead and do that because it's hard for them to get out. Let's go. Begin to do. There you go. Good. That's it. That's it. Bring them on out. Come on down. Come on down. 
Go ahead and spread them on out. There's more people there. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Have them do what they could not do to do. They do before. Short and direct. There you go. Amen. Good, good, good. Good, good. There we go. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, let's move through. Now, if you've been ministered to, go ahead and go back and be seated. But begin to do what you could not do before. Begin to do what you could not do before. If you couldn't bend, bend. If you couldn't raise your leg, raise your leg. Armand. Armand. Now listen carefully. Starting to calm down a little bit. Quiet down just a minute. Listen carefully. Now, in dealing with children, okay, there's several children. In dealing with children, it's better if you don't get loud. Okay? Be calm, be peaceful, and just let life flow into them. But speak forcefully, but not let make sure they know you're not talking to them. Okay? You want to give peace to them, not fear, not shake them up, right? Be peaceful and calm, right? That, that's a key. Oh, and by the way, if you're dealing with children, you don't have to mention spirits, all right? You can just tell the thing to go. The spirit knows you're talking to it. You don't have to call it a spirit, all right? So it's just little notes. All right? Now, is there anybody else that needs prayer? Anybody else? A couple right there. All right, come on down. Good, good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hey, heaven call.